Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast and today I want to talk about the Cory Catfish and take a look at why we are so fascinated by them. Oh, we use the uh, extreme fish food quite a bit in our shop. Uh, we like it very much. Uh, it's very palatable for the fish. We, uh, a lot of times fish that don't eat other things will eat the pellets, which is a great thing. So when you talk about the Cory catfish, the Cory Doris, a little tiny catfish like that, that's probably one of the first fish that anybody ever puts in their aquarium. You look around and you see advanced hobbyists, people with discus, people with uh, very sophisticated aquariums, and as often as not, there's the little cory swimming around in the tank. Well, the cool thing about the cory is that it comes in so many varieties, and I was curious about, do people actually collect the cory? I mean, it's cute, it doesn't bother anything in the tank, it, it's like a cleanup crew in your saltwater aquarium, it takes care of all the stuff, the food that gets sifted down to the bottom that even the plecos won't eat and the bigger fish aren't interested in, so it serves a great purpose. But the thing about the quarry is it comes in so many varieties, and in a moment here I want to show you one of the rarest varieties ever. And I'll tell you why I think you're interested in that. Because there's something called the collector gene. Now, you do a Google search for the collector gene, and I just did one on the computer over here, and I got hundreds of thousands of hits. And we're talking about people who collect coins, who collect Beanie Babies, who collect bottle caps, who collect ink pens, I mean, you name it, there's no doubt that there is something out there called the collector gene. And so what you want to do is, of course, you want to collect as many of something as you can, and people can't help themselves. And with a Cory catfish, there's so many varieties that I've often been tempted to see how many I could put in one tank, and I've had to kind of put a check on that. But according to sort of the, the value of collectibles, the rarer something is, the more valuable it is. And when you have one that nobody else has, well, that's even cooler still. So when I was at the Global Pet Show in early 2016, I came across a display of a long, thin Cory catfish. And the folks from Seagrist Farms had imported it just for the show to show it off. Now, it's really just a an albino cory catfish with long fins, no big deal, right? Well, maybe it is. Uh, they were telling me at the show that there probably were fewer than a hundred of them in the United States at the time, that these come from Eastern Europe, that they're lime bred, and there's just not a lot of them around. So, of course, that piqued my interest, and I wanted to find out a little bit more about it. So, I talked with the folks at Seagrist Farms, and here's what they had to say about the long thin Cory catfish, which I know that some of you are going to want to add to your collection, right? Well, it's referred to as a super long fin albino Aeneas Cory cat. Um, that particular strain actually gets an even longer or more veiled fin than the common veiled fin albino Aeneas, or just a, a veiled fin Cory cat. Uh, that particular strain comes from the Czech Republic, uh, and I'm not familiar with them working with the super long fin strain anywhere else in the world. Uh, you just have a small contingency of uh, essentially hobbyists that work with these lines. It's a line bred fish, uh, so just like, um, just like anything else where you breed for a very specific trait, uh, it has to be bred for generations and generations and generations. So there's only a couple of people in, in, in the world that are actually working with that particular strain. Maybe somewhere around 100 fish. Seagrass Farms brought in just a couple of dozen. Uh, our sister company brought in about that many as well. Um, and I. I look through lists here and there for some of our competitors, and I've never seen them on there. So probably somewhere in the vicinity of a dozen, do, or excuse me, dozens, maybe around a hundred or so. Not many at all. I've been at Seagrass Farms now for about five years. This is the this is the first time I can remember us bringing in the super long fin variety. Uh, we do bring in the long fin variety several times throughout the year, uh, but as far as on a, on a hobby level, actually running across this fish in an, in, in an aquarium store, they would be very rare. Very rare. Uh, head over to our website. Uh, we have a store locator feature on there. Uh, you type in your, your zip code and it'll pull up all the local uh, independent stores that are currently buying from Seagrest Farms. Uh, then you just go ahead and Google the, the store, see how far away it is, walk in there and tell them that they saw the video and they want the fish and have the, the guy at the counter give Seagrest Farms a call. They're, they're really not that expensive. Um, it's, it's just a really niche fish. Uh, you could probably walk into a store and pay uh, anywhere between $20 and $30 for a fish like that at most.
Once again, this is a regular old quarry catfish with long fins, so it'll do well in just about any community tank, water parameters, and, and I'm not going to go into great depth. It's going to like a near a neutral pH, and it's tank raised, and it's already going to eat pellets, and it's, it'll do pretty much anything else that another quarry catfish will do. The difference, if you can find one of these, and Seagrass Farms does supply many of the aquarium shops in the United States, is you are going to have to ask your local fish store to contact their wholesaler, which hopefully Seagrass Farms is one of them in this case, and ask them to try and import these. And when they can get them on the list, they'll import them. And it could be, as you, as you heard, an expensive fish. It could cost $30 for a quarry catfish. But if you want that quarry catfish that nobody else has, that's super rare, then you won't mind buying a couple of them and putting them in your aquarium and, and they should do very well. This is a, an easy fish to keep. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the long finned quarry catfish. Uh, I'd like to hear your comments down below. What do you think about our profiles on rare fish? Part of me thinks that people want to find a video about everyday fish and there's more people who want to know about say goldfish or guppies than they do these super rare fish. But I like kind of trying to find these rare fish and talking about them and, and bringing you that, that information. So there's a look at the long fin quarry catfish. Please click around. I'm sure you'll find lots of things you like. Leave your comments down below. I love to hear your comments and I do try to reply to most of them. At least give them a thumbs up. And please subscribe to the channel. It's doing very well and I would really like to get to 10,000 subscribers sometime uh, maybe by the middle of uh, late 2016, early 2017. We're in the 6,000s now and I would really like it if you'd subscribe and, and help me reach that personal goal. It would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching this FinCast and I'll see you in the next one.